Good afternoon and welcome to Coach Adrian's Bike Shop. Today we're going to be refurbishing four wheels in various states of disrepair. Got the wheel set off of Fastback Schwinn Stingray. Those are just going to get light tension balancing, hub greasing, quality control assessment. Then we're going to move on to this fat bike wheel that's been totally destroyed by a stick in the woods. Finally, got a bent axle to replace it, an old 26 inch front. Just another day in the bicycle junkyard. You know, we got no axle vice here and nothing really beyond the bare minimum. And this grease gun's actually full of uh, tractor grease, like the heavy duty tractor chassis grease, which is a great economy. I'll just loosen these up and kind of keep the bearings in place. Get a little table weight on the old axle there and just get my big old chassis grease gun and just just go ahead and fill her right on up there. No need to serve here. Now this does kind of look like that green grease a certain bicycle company likes to sell to you. Now, of course, who knows, I'm no petroleum chemist, but wouldn't be using this as my Dura Acers, but in this old Schwinn, it's gonna be just fine. Now, here's the, where the, the sort of real challenge comes into play. We gotta not lose any ball bearings here as we go on over to the other side. So, kind of bring a little tension. I know there's a lot of extra grease, but I ain't concerned about that. We'll wipe that off in due course here. Now we just give it a little whoop. And got lucky. Sometimes you lose a couple ball bearings using that method, but usually you don't. And uh, you're right on over there to the other side. So the idea here is, you know, we could take out all these bearings, clean them all, and do all that kind of stuff, but maybe not so much restoring this. It's just keeping everything from not rusting. Now, normally, when you're working on a wheel like this, you kind of only want to loosen up the one side axle assembly so that the stick out of the axle on either side remains uniform. But on this unit here, the whole hub assembly was totally loose, so we've just kind of let that all go and we're going to start over and make sure it's sticking out a uniform amount on either side here. So. Take my rag, clean up this grease, and now we can see that on uh, this one side here, I've got quite a bit more axle protrusion. For a precision application or a quick release, where you'd need to have a very precise amount of stick out on either side, you really would want to bust out the caliper and measure the actual stick out. But in this case, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it to the old good enough ometer here. So there's a great tool called an axle vise that allows you to hold an axle steady so that you're not spinning stuff you don't want to be spinning when you're fiddling about with these sorts of hub assemblies, but I would be doing it the right way. So here's a little bit of fun trivia or forensics for you. You can see this here is a Schwinn approved freewheel. I'm not exactly sure what the model year is on this, though I'm sure it could be deduced from the serial number. We can also see here that's a French manufactured unit and those fans of you who uh, love these, maybe not love, but have dealt with the many old freewheel spline patterns might be able to tell that it looks to me like a, my, uh, here we go, butchering the pronunciation no doubt, but a Maillard or Maillard, 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 who knows, that uh, manufacturer of freewheel looks like that spline pattern. So perhaps the uh, Schwinn folks were outsourcing that part manufacturing to those guys or someone else with the same spline pattern. Pretty interesting, interesting to see these old American bikes utilizing a European supply chain for parts that's like totally different than our supply chain looks now. Here's my uh, low thigh grease gun hub greasing method. It's pretty simple. We just get this axle nut off. Get a cone wrench on. Lock nut, pop loose, and I'll just bring the lock nut out. Now at this point, just to be careful, I'll keep some pressure on the other side of the axle. So it probably won't be in danger of losing any ball bearings until we uh, actually loosen up that cone. Now, I'm going to loosen the cone up here. Just 
got this, uh, I like when they have those intermediate washers with this like little sticking out tooth in there to keep everything locked, kind of like a keyed washer. That's a nice thing. Keeps things in adjustment a little more consistently, I find. Now I just bring this up till I can get a clean, clear shot with my grease gun in there. So much scongy old stuff. Who knows last time this was opened up, so need a little help from the cone wrench to loosen this off through all the noise. If I was true professional, I would have cleaned this far more, th more thoroughly before opening it up, but hey, can't do a perfect job on everything if you want to do as many things. So, in we go. Now, you can see those ball bearings hanging out now, and we're just going to keep pressure on that axle and uh, go ahead and inject some grease into there. Pretty agricultural here. This thing is... Uh, We've got a freebie here that had a bent axle, and so I got a nice replacement axle that's the right width and still has the right thread pitch and the nice little slot for my keyed washers. So it's basically a factory replacement. We're gonna go ahead and not clean any of these bearings, not take them out, just replace the hub hardware and squirt some grease into this thing and live to fight another day. And see here, got all my hub parts. They're all nicely organized on a zip tie, just for my convenience. So, step one, go ahead and snip those off, Boing. return them to service. The professional thing to do is to orient this stuff in kind of the order it goes on so you remember that, but I trust my memory. Sometimes when you're taking these apart, the seal will come out with the cone, and on the other side, the seal stayed in the hub. So, what I'm going to do is pop this guy back in the hub here. Just like that. And then what I'm gonna do is thread in one side, get everything kind of mocked up, and then I'm gonna make it so that the amount of axle sticking out is symmetrical. This is especially important for our quick release application because if you're replacing an axle on a quick release wheel and you get it so that the amount of stick out's non-symmetrical, well one, you might have a safety problem because you don't have enough axle structure to rest in the dropout or the fork blades. And the other problem is that if the axle sticks out too far, like the uh, axle material is actually sticking past outboard of the dropout, then when you go to tant your quick release down, it's not going to be clamping up against the frame. It's going to be clamping up against nothing, which means that your wheel's going to want to fall off. So what I'm going to do is get this thing symmetrical with just the cones so I don't have as much stuff to move around. And then I'll just put on the rest of the stuff once I know it's in there. Good, we're gonna add some grease. We're just gonna go ahead and put a whole bunch of grease sort of on slash in the general bearing area. And we'll just have faith that with the time and pressure and the right amount of grease, it's more or less gonna go to where it has to go. You know, I find a lot of people that working on bicycles tend to treat every bearing like it's some five million dollar bearing in some kind of aerospace application and really when it comes to little spinny spheres it doesn't get much more low speed and low stakes than something like a bicycle wheel used for everyday cargo transportation Let's see if I common cone wrench sizes tend to be like a 13 15 and a 17 lock nuts tend to be either 15 or a 17 of course they're all number of different sizes but those are ones I see most frequently so what I'm gonna do here is just stick a 13 box wrench on this cone so that I can use my 13 cone wrench to tighten it because I only got one size of each cone wrench. And of course, this isn't going to tighten until I have a lock nut on the other side because there's nothing holding anything in place anymore. So we'll just go ahead and slide this whole hub assembly on. We'll get the spacing figured out in due course. 
once I have a lock nut holding this cone in place, I'll have the rigid assembly that I can use to tighten my other cone against because it's having a hard time biting on the beginning of those threads. Of course, the reason I'm working all sideways like is because I've got ball bearings that are flying and floating around. And if I were to get this whole deal horizontal so that the long axis of the hub is parallel to the ground, it's just a matter of time before I drop a bunch of ball bearings on the ground. You might say that's kind of just a matter of time, no matter what. That'd be right as well. They will hit the deck, but doing stuff the way that feels like a shortcut, even though it's not, that's the smart part. Okay, now we got something to tighten this guy against. So we'll stick our 17 on the lock nut and bring it on down. I suppose that the long form narration could be just downright tedious, but maybe it's gonna be that kind of thing where like, you know, you never done this before. And you're watching some ultra sanitized guy wearing some kind of polo shirt and highly fluorescent environment, working in like a workbench that's only ever used for making little promotional TV spots. You know, like, God, this guy's doing too darn good of a job. Man. You can come over here and just feel validated in your hackery and watching this kind of stuff. That's maybe what we're going for, because hey, better hacking than nothing, right? Anyway, tighten down the old cone. Just between you and me, no shade to anybody out there in the bicycle specific petroleum product industry, but sometimes I can't help but wonder is there really much of a difference between these greases? All right, final challenge of the day is spent with wheels. This is a fat bike wheel for a friend. And you can see that it has seen better days. Basically hit some unexpected stick action in the woods. Stick got up in the mix and uh, managed to karate chop about eight of these spokes out of here mangling quite a few others. So got to knock this rotor off, do some forensics, do some relacing, and uh, hopefully we can get this thing tensioned up to where it's close enough. Let's go. Wow guys, I actually am somewhat pleased. You can see that I have not got any of the fat bike type stuff for this drewing stand, but for what I'm going for here, it ain't perfect, but I'm gonna say that's just close enough. Now, the funny thing is, God, you know, flat bike wheel with bladed spokes. Of course, now not all of them are bladed, which is like totally professional, but that's okay. You know, they've got the little deals. It really is important with these bladed spokes when you're truing them to keep the blades in the correct orientation so you don't have them all twisted up and gouging into each other and causing all kinds of mischief. So you want to have a little bladed spoke tool that you're holding that blade section straight with while you use your spoke wrench to tighten and loosen. Just long story short, you know, if you've got parts like this, this is a nice piece that got totally 
tweaked out in a weird chain incident that destroyed this fat bike wheel, but there's still plenty of good parts to be harvested off of these barrel adjusters, limit screws, cable clamps, jockey wheels, etc. If you got a derailleur that's been crash damaged like this, don't just throw it in the garbage. Maybe that's an opportunity to take something apart and learn how it works or harvest some little springs and wheels and doodly bits that can keep other derailleurs in service for longer or put something back in service.